Whether you've been tasked with crafting a Google AdWords campaign for your B2B client, or maybe you're looking into building out Facebook ads to draw in new customers for a recently signed account, there's a lot that goes into building a successful digital advertising campaign. You can't just hit start on a campaign and let it run on its own. It really needs monthly TLC, optimization, and continuous monitoring. I'm Nicole Lozon, and in this video, we explore some of the need to knows when it comes to digital ads and how to provide a strong return on investment for your local business clients. Let's turn our attention to some of the digital advertising metrics that matter. When it comes to digital ads, the numbers are your best friend. You can't do your job well without them, and your clients can't measure how good you are at your job without that data. But how do you know which ones matter and why? How do you perform a proper ad ROI analysis? How can you tell if your ads are successful? And how do you communicate those results to clients in your monthly reports? These are absolutely all legitimate questions, even among marketing pros. While the metrics you choose will depend on your business goals, we've really narrowed them down to the ones that we use regularly to measure our return on investment, also known as ROI. Please use this video as a guide to gain a better understanding of each metric that matters, the ones to avoid, and how to set realistic goals for your next ad campaigns. Choosing the right digital advertising metrics to track and measure is crucial to your campaign's success. If you aren't tracking your efforts correctly through marketing automation and software tools, you'll never really know what's working and you won't be able to communicate success to your clients. The first step to determining your ad success is setting goals with benchmarks that matter. When you determine your core ROI goals, you'll be able to measure data that tells the story of how your target audience interacts with your ads. So here are those key metrics. Cost per acquisition or CPA. This metric will tell you how much it costs to acquire a new lead in any given channel. Knowing the cost to acquire a client in your business is the basis of your marketing budget. So it's crucial data to add to your ROI analysis. Combined with other ad data, this will determine whether your business will make a profit. Ideally, you'll want to get a sense for which mix of ad channels work best for your clients in the industries that you focus on. Are you going to be leveraging search ads? Maybe your audience is most receptive to Facebook ads, or you want to target display advertising on competitor websites. Then you'll be able to better optimize your ad budget going forward. Let's take a look at the formula for calculating cost per acquisition. Your cost per acquisition is equal to the budget spent divided by the number of potential customers you converted. Cost per acquisition is a simple but valuable formula. Knowing how much it costs to acquire a new lead is key to understanding your ad ROI as a metric. Next up, we have lifetime value or LTV. If you don't already know the lifetime value of your client's customers, you absolutely should. Even though you might not have access to your client's balance sheet, they should be able to give you a number that represents the revenue that a new customer brings in with all of the costs factored in. If you know the lifetime value of a customer, you'll be able to compare it directly with the cost of acquiring a new client through your digital ad campaign. Getting your clients to simply provide their customer LTV, however, can definitely be a challenge. Many just don't know. Here's the formula that you can use to help get the answers that you need. Customer lifetime value is your new benchmark and attracting customers with a higher lifetime value from your ads is the goal. Here's a pro tip for you. If you're having trouble tracking attribution, look at session duration in Google Analytics. This can be a really great proxy for lead quality. For example, if you see that traffic from LinkedIn spends an average of three minutes on your site, while traffic from Facebook only spends half a minute, you can decipher that your LinkedIn targeting is bringing in higher quality leads that are more interested in your product or service. Now that we understand how to calculate and analyze the lifetime value of your client's customers, we'll be able to track the revenue generated by your digital advertising campaign. As you can see, you just need to multiply your campaign's conversions by the LTV and closing ratio. Now it's important to remember every new lead you generate isn't gonna become a customer. So you'll need to factor in how often your client is able to close new leads to estimate campaign revenue correctly. 
As you perform your ROI analysis, it can be tough to tell what optimal revenue is for each campaign. It totally depends on your goals, the campaign type, and even the budget. A decent rule of thumb though is about a five to one revenue to cost ratio. Return on advertising spend is an illuminating digital advertising metric. In fact, a lot of marketers use it interchangeably with ROI itself. However, there are key differences between the two. ROI measures the profit generated by ads relative to the cost of those ads. It's a business-centric metric that is most effective at measuring how ads contribute to an organization's bottom line. Return on advertising spend, on the other hand, measures gross revenue generated for every dollar spent on advertising. It gauges the effectiveness of online advertising campaigns. To analyze the return on advertising spend of your ad campaign, it depends on a lot of campaign and industry factors. However, at least a five to one ratio is a good place to start. Setting your own benchmarks and campaign goals based on past performance is the best way to proceed and set client expectations. Finally, well, it's tempting to pump up other results you've accumulated during your client's ad campaign. It's really important to resist the desire. Vanity metrics like clicks, shares, and engagement are fun to look at, but unless they are driving leads, they are not valuable to a sales funnel. This isn't to say you should ignore this data, but you shouldn't base campaign goals around them. Think of things like impressions, shares, clicks, and engagement as clues that help you analyze the health of your campaigns. They're valuable to track and understand, but they shouldn't take the focus away from the core digital advertising metrics that make or break your campaigns. To recap, the four digital ad metrics that matter are cost per acquisition or CPA, lifetime value or LTV, campaign revenue, and return on advertising spend. With that, I do just wanna share a friendly reminder to like and subscribe so you can keep your eyes out for more great content on all things digital, including topics like email marketing, time management, and even ways to improve the ROI on your digital ad campaigns. See you soon.